Hi, um, this is Kimberly Simo. How is everyone? Um, I know we've had three Mercury retrogrades happen and today is um, like the third one. So welcome, my uh, Facebook Live is not working, but you know, this is why we've got lots of platforms going on at once. So, um, so glad that you could join me today um, for Energy Works. And um, today, you know, we've had so much energy come through since um, May 11th, and then yesterday, May 13th, and now May 14th today, which um, if we can, this is a turning point for everyone. And if we can really um, capitalize on this energy that is coming in and through, then we can have whole new lives. And so today uh, we're going to uh, work through this energy work process and um, kind of creating in the greater whole. And uh, a client, you know, um, sent me this um, text as far as kind of asking this question, you know, here, um, she said that she had met a person that she really liked, you know, overseas when she was on her trip. And, um, and then they had spent kind of three intense months, you know, communicating and talking and really connecting with one another. And just such a heart opening, such a connected space. And then um, what had happened is the person lost their home so that they were going through this transition. They had to move. And isn't that the truth? It's kind of like the transition we're all going through right now. It's like our foundation has been rocked. And, um, and a lot of times when we get thrown off our foundation, kind of like in this case for the person that she really liked, she didn't hear from them for two months. It was like from all this communication to nothing. And, you know, when people get um, blown off their foundation, um, they go into survival, they go into panic. And this is kind of what we're going to be talking about, which is connected to um, the book, The Business of Being. So, you know, I am asking um, people that are joining, thank you for those who have supported me. Um, we're looking to get 500 pre-orders because then we get international publishing. So I'm offering these free courses and in exchange asking for you to go to kimblissimo.com and pre-order this amazing book that we are gonna be talking about because it is how you can navigate this time, kind of navigate um, your life instead of you know responding and reacting in the chaos. So I was just telling the story of a, a client here and I got partway through it about how she met, you know, kind of the lover of her life, he's overseas, and so much communication and connection, and then he disappears for two months, you know, he moved, you get thrown off your foundation, and so this allowed, you know, my client to kind of reevaluate what her boundaries were, to, you know, say, I'm gonna have people that show up for me, to really love myself and focus inward on myself. And so she dropped them, you know, well, hard to do, you know, easy to say, hard to do. However, like I'm gonna let it go and move forward kind of into these new relationships. But you know, your mind tends to go back to where, you know, your heart kind of was opened. And so then he resurfaces, isn't this the truth? Kind of when you let go of someone, they start to resurface. People can really feel um, when you pull your energy out. A lot of times too, I wanna say that in relationships, that if our attention is so much on that other person, you know, we're in their space. They think it's their energy. People can feel energy in, in their space. And you know, it's, we merge, we merge with people. And when we merge our energy fields with people, what can happen then is they don't, they don't know it's their energy, um, our energy. And, um, and so, you know, this brings me to an, another client who hadn't talked to her ex for 10 years and we were in session and um, I'm like, well, I could still see your energies over there helping him create a life and, and she goes, well, I haven't talked to him, so that's impossible. And we pulled the energy back. And in the session, he called because he recognized what it felt like without her energy in the space. And so, you know, our attention, this is about training attention. 
our attention, you know, where it goes, our energy flows. And when we place it on someone, especially kind of you have this heart connection with someone and your attention is over there, you're wanting something to happen and it's not happening. It breaks our heart. It puts us in pain, it puts us in survival. And um, with my client here, she, you know, says, no, I'm going to, I'm going to take my attention. I'm going to place it on me. I'm going to set some boundaries and um, move forward. And then this guy resurfaces again. And um, she said, you know, she was honest with herself. She brought up the issue like, hey, what happened to you? You're, you know, you didn't show up. And um, kind of his response, and this is where a lot of times people aren't aware, they just don't have the level or um, they don't even know why sometimes, you know, they just know there's pain in their space, they're in survival, they're reactive. And, um, you know, and so he's kind of been showing up, you know, in a, in a kind way, she's saying, in a communication way, in, you know, how much he can show up. But, you know, on the other hand, her question is, how, how do I get resolution in this relationship and honest communication? So um, the relationship at this point, because it is a long distance relationship and long distance relationships um, are kind of hard. The thing I didn't say in this um, little story here too is, you know, that um, he had broken up with somebody three months prior to the meeting. But um, long distance relationships, they're kind of good um, and they're kind of hard. I, I would have to say, especially um, in my client's um, kind of backspace pain pictures, what got triggered for her when he didn't you know, contact her for two months. And isn't that happened to all of us? It's like here it is moving along, everyone's heart is open. And then what the fuck? It's like, what happened? And we don't know, we're left, well, we're trying to figure it out then in the mind, like what happened? There's no logical explanation for what happened, you know, and then we're wounded, you know, and this closed down our heart. So for her, the question is, how do I get resolution in this relationship and honest communication? And that's what we're gonna be working on kind of today, working through kind of this um, process and energy works and, you know, we can, first of all, like she has been very honest with herself. I need somebody showing up. I need, you know, people that can communicate, can support me, can love me because that's what she gives. And so it's very important. Like she has an intention. Her intention is first that I'm going to care for myself because in caring for myself and showing up for myself, now, you know, this person showed up. Now we don't know how much he can sustain. A lot of times people, when they start to feel this love and intimacy, they freak out, they go into survival, they disconnect from their feelings. And this is what's so frustrating and where so many of us get so stuck at times because see, you can feel the feeling with a person and that's real. And that feeling is present, it's the wave energy. But, you know, they're saying, or their actions are, you know, I'm, I'm not showing up. I'm not going to do it. That disconnect can be, um, you know, this is what is so abusive, you know, um, that disconnect when that disconnect happens and it leaves us confused because then what happens is we cling on, we attach to the time where we had that heart connection, where the flow of communication was happening. And, um, and when people are thrown off their foundation and they are in survival, which we're going to talk about because there are kind of four um, survival strategies. But, um, you know, the most important step that she is doing right now is I'm going to be honest with myself. And being honest with um, myself uh, means that, you know, this person that she's talking about may not be able to show up. He may, you know, may come in and out you know, and it depends too. It's kind of like if she places her attention on him and wondering, is he going to show up? Is he not going to show up? If the attention on what is he doing? 
You know, how do I get resolution? Kind of, if you're looking in the external world for resolution to happen, based on what that person does, is he going to call? Is he not going to call? Then, you know, it leaves you in a very vulnerable position as opposed to the resolution is kind of, I'm going to talk about this, turning within, kind of playing that internal well-being game. Because when we start to place our attention within, we choose what we place our attention on. And it is this choice and where we give our energy, where we give our attention, it is gold. And when we can place it within ourselves, we're choosing ourselves first. And not only that, how do we get real resolution? Well, we make the resolution in a sense because you know, we're not leaving it up to them to decide whenever they feel like it, they can call or not call. Like, you know, the resolution is I'm here. I'm, I'm here a hundred percent showing up for myself by doing that. Now it gets you in the body in a new way. That means that in, you know, your internal pictures, which we'll talk about, start to change. And that then will allow a person because they'll feel you. People are connected. It just doesn't go away. And this is a part of the thing too, just this wave energy and this connection you feel. And by you having that boundary, I'm going to show up for myself, be here for myself. You've just made the choice, you know, and that communication, it has to be present. It has, somebody has to fully engage. Otherwise, you know, it's kind of like a, what they're wanting is, you know, he showed back up he's given attention and here's what you have to really watch the moment you give attention back does he disappear and if he disappears it's kind of like it's food for him to go off and I don't know meet somebody else you know or just to give him fuel because most people aren't connected so they need fuel in order to create with so our resource the most valuable resource we have is our energy and, and how we can change our energy is what we do with our attention. And if we know this, then, you know, we're, we're a little more discriminant. You know, we need to experience flow from that person. And, and a lot of people are unconscious. So, you know, you can throw maybe some communication out there, but what we're looking is for this exchange to happen. And if that exchange happens and a lot of times, you know, people need to be trained you know, um, and, and if you leave your attention out there and don't place your attention back in your heart, then kind of you're setting it up. And so we have to always continue to place the attention within our center. That way, um, we'll automatically pull in our attention, our energy. And this is kind of the new agreement that we have with ourself. You know, how do I resolve that relationship? I'm resolving it within myself by showing up for myself. And um, how do I get honest communication? You know, with another client, it was very interesting. Um, somebody had, um, she likes this person and, um, and you know, the other person says, well, you know, I really just want to be friends right now. And, and she said, you know, usually it would be, okay, that's fine. I'm going to just match what the other person said and go along with it. But she's being honest now because, you know, in these three days that we've had kind of a portal opened and in this portal, you know, there is a retrograde in these three days. So all kinds of things are happening, but this is a tipping point for you to be extremely honest, honest with your feelings, honest, not just in giving, because we're going to talk here and just like my client, you know, is a giver is one to, you know, um, if somebody says, I want to be friends, okay, sure, I'll accommodate that. But now, no, that's not the case. It's like, well, what do I want here? You know, I, I'm interested in a relationship. Now, I'm not attached to that, but just the mere fact of being honest and saying, you know, I'm feeling something within me. Now, I don't know if it's going to go anywhere, but I've got to be honest with how I feel and communicate that now. Um, so we can really clear out the distortions. So today I'm going to be answering kind of this question by going through, um, this kind of process. And this is some, we're going to talk about a little about the business of being in this, because, 
this really relates to what is happening, kind of why do we suffer? Why do we suffer in these relationships? How do we get into um, kind of the survival that we're in? And we suffer because like in her instance, she got abandoned, we get disconnected. And you know, when we're disconnected, then we don't know our purpose. Like, well, what's happening? I just need somebody to explain it. And, and then we kind of give up hope or you may have even felt in these past three days, a lot of energy is coming up for people. You may have felt exhausted or just really sad or depressed because the reality that you're looking at isn't what you want. And the people in your life, you know, could be kind of not very honest with you and, and you're starting to really see what is. So there could be a lot of pain coming up, but I want to, I want to encourage you. You know, it's very important here that how we see and most people in the game of survival see in duality. And what does that mean? It means that, you know, we see in opposites. We see, you know, I want this person and it's not happening. You know, I want my intention, but I'm getting the opposite. And by kind of looking at what's happening around us, and, and how people are in the opposites, kind of not being able to accept the reality that we're in, and it's not what we want. And, and how do I get somebody to communicate? Well, this person may not ever open their heart and communicate because the reality is, the reality is, is that this person is in their mind when we're all wanting to experience this heart connection because it is where in the heart you can experience wholeness where you can start to create from the greater whole and today is the day we've been you know 13th kind of you know the 11th 13th 14th it's the tipping point and what does that mean today is the day to get out of duality to get out of survival and survival we're all acting crazy and and to really drop into the heart and to be able to create from wholeness. And how do we do that in a world that's, you know, kind of Republican Democrat? How do we do it in black and white? You know, when, when what you see are pictures of, you know, people's opinions, what they think, and most of what you're seeing in the reality today isn't even truth. It's just opinions and pictures. So the game of survival there are many players in this game and, um, and it happens with our intention, attention in the external world. And, and we're looking at, okay, duality. This is what you're seeing like in with my client here and this person not showing up, it was heart connected and boom, he's in survival and now nothing makes sense. And so there's four survival strategies. So what happens is this, is it's kind of like in the old days, if let's say there is a snake on the path, you know, my response, my behavioral response is, you know, I'm gonna chop its head off, I'm gonna fight it, I'm gonna take off and start running, you know, it's fight, flight, please, and freeze. You know, I may just be frozen, you know, it's like when I grew up, that's what I did, I would please, and there's a combination of, of you know, several strategies, we can play them all out, but it's very important to kind of recognize here um, these strategies. Um, but, but here's the thing, something in the physical environment danger that happens, like our heart rate jumps up, we see that snake, ah, and but then we don't see the snake and it goes away. But what happens is we have these mental fears and these mental fears then stay with us. It's kind of like the fear picture of, you know, I'm stupid. I'm stupid and this, if you have this picture of I'm stupid, see, it doesn't go away. You know, the picture of I'm, a, you know, abandoned, here I am abandoned again. It's kind of sits within your space. And so there is this response to it. And what happens is fight will turn into a narcissist. So, you know, in, a narcissist become narcissists because they've had to, you know, their behavioral response is fighting, right? And so a narcissist means that, you know, it's kind of every, it has to be about me. 
the focus has to be on me. That your coping kind of mechanism, not that it's really coping, is that you know you blame everyone else and um, and you're trying to pull everyone's attention because it's an attention attention game, right? Give me your attention. I need your attention on me. And if your attention is not on me, um, I don't exist. So a narcissist has to have attention on that, you know, that person. And so that is one coping strategy, the narcissism. So the second strategy, and it's connected to, you know, kind of this, this flight is obsessive compulsive. Okay. I was that I was an organizer, the first organizer kind of in the States. So growing up with a hoarder, what did I do? My survival, my survival mechanism was I was organizing. My attention was on all the objects, kind of creating order on everything outside. This is the obsessive compulsive. I'm washing my hands, you know, like a million times, you know, it's like, because the outside threat of the objects of the germs, my attention, like looking at, okay, what is threatening me? And so we become obsessive compulsive in order to try to manage in order to try to create a safe space so that we're safe so that you know we aren't always in survival and that third kind of um, coping mechanism is pleasing you know fight flight you know please please is the codependent that was me <laughs> and the codependent is you know when you start to feel something's off you know like in this case of person doesn't show up anymore. Okay, well, you know, I want love. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start to please. I'm going to cook. I mean, I'm going to give, I'm going to do everything to please typically a narcissist, right? In order um, to give to them, because what it will do is it will ensure my love, my safety, my support. And, and these are, these things are subconscious. These things you know, this is why it's very important to see like our reaction to things, our response to things. And so this codependency then, you know, you, you need a narcissist kind of in order to, for these two, the dynamic to play out, the game to play out. So our attention goes into, I'm going to just please and give and do and do and do. And isn't it interesting because right now that tendency, codependency is really up. And what I mean by that is that we have to stop that right now <laughs> because in pleasing and giving and doing, see, you're not very honest, you know, because like, and I have to say I was very much this way, you know, in pleasing and giving what, you know, I could tell what somebody needed. I knew what they needed even before they knew what they needed. You know, this is part of healer, you tune in to pain and, and, you know, and you would give it, to get something back in a way, to get love back, to get, you know, to ensure your safety, to ensure survival. And, um, and so, but it's very important if you are a pleaser to be very honest with yourself. Like my client saying, you know, yeah, um, you want to be friends, but you know, I'm, I'm feeling something more for you right now. You know, I'm, and I have to honor myself and honoring myself is I'm pleasing myself that I got to be completely honest. And right now it's extremely important for you pleasers, you know, f to be very honest. And this could be even in a family dynamic, you know, with your partner where you may see some distortion in the space. Maybe they're a narcissist. Maybe they, they have a big ego and they need a lot of attention and, you know, they need that external support in order to feel good about themselves. Because if they don't get that, then they go into survival. And then they start to get into competition with you. So, you know, and then you start giving because you can feel kind of the threat in the space. And, and so, but now we have to speak up to it because, you know, especially kind of with Venus yesterday, meaning, you know, today we have to speak our truth. We have to be honest with ourselves because it takes courage. And courage means that you can be in the heart. You're, you're going to stand up for yourself. You're going to say your truth. And, you know, you may not get the communication that you want to hear back from the person, but it's not about that person. And, and the reality is, is you say, well, maybe I don't want to bring it up because I don't want to get into an argument. But the moment you get out of sur kind of survival or duality, 
you're not in an argument. And I mean by that is you don't have the position. You don't have an opinion. It's like you're just taking care of yourself and you're talking about, you know, what it is that you need for yourself and you're committed to fully you and expressing yourself. And, you know, that person may not give it, may give it, may not, but it's not about really them. It is, it, it's about you being honest. And codependence, you can tell that, you know, the more they please people, kind of the worse their life is or worse it gets, you know, things tend to blow up, you know, and, and the lesson is, you know, checking in, which we're going to talk about here, and then really speaking your truth. And so we have the narcissist, which is correlated to fighting, right? Because the narcissist always loves a good fight. So if you're in duality, you don't even bother. This is a game you see of survival. You're not interested. And the second thing is um, pleasing, right? Pleasing is the codependent. And you kind of are aware of that. And the, and the third thing is um, the disassociative. So what does that mean? Well, you know, I was that too. <laughs> kind of very early on being overtaken, having a lot of trauma early on. You learn to cope and survive by, I remember three years old, flying up above my body, looking at my body, totally checking out. And, and then you start to live in this world, kind of in this dream or, you know, kind of in stories or fantasies out of your space because it's too painful. It's like a lot of people are even in relationships where it's too painful to be in that relationship. And so they're, you know, in fantasy realm or in a different reality in order to cope. You know, a lot of times most affairs happen too because it's too kind of hard to be in that space. So, you know, you, you got to live and exist some more, somewhere else because the reality that you're in, it's too much survival. So fantasy starts to happen or just living in a different reality. And by being disassociated, it's very hard to get in the body. It's hard to bring your energy in in order for things to manifest. And, um, and so that's the third strategy. Or So we have narcissist, um, obsessive compulsive codependent, and the fourth strategy is the disassociate. And so this, these are all in um, my book, The Business of Being. And, you know, so the book is amazing because it talks about kind of how, how do we navigate this? Because what we're learning in the external world, our attention, you know, the threats, all of these things of survival. So this is the external game. And then you start to learn in depth about your reactions, kind of your coping mechanisms. And, and then, so the next step is the game of well-being. And what is the game of well-being? Well, the game of well-being, there isn't all these bunch of players. There's one player and that's you. And, and really how we have wellness, wholeness, well-being. It's not in duality, kind of where the attention is moving out in the external. And, you know, this is the perfect time to move into this new inner wellness game because it is about our attention and what our attention is doing. And so by placing our attention within our heart, it's kind of like the flashlight, by placing it here, our mind's always going to pull it out. But by continually, you know, bringing back our attention and our objective, our attention on our inner world, what starts to happen then is our pictures start to illuminate. And next course, um, next week, I'm going to go more in depth about pictures, but um, just to touch on pictures lightly, a picture, it's kind of like a snapshot. Um, a picture is like a program. It, it stores information, stores energy. It's a thought. It's a belief. You know, it is, it's an imprint in our memory and it's a template. And so what happens is it's kind of like we come to every moment with our pictures. It's like a filing cabinet stored with all these pictures. 
And so we're assessing, like if our attention is outward, we're assessing, is this dangerous, is this not? We're coming at the moment with our past, right? And all these pictures. And if we see things in the external world and things start to get triggered within us, it activates a picture. And that starts to make a reaction. I'm abandoned, you know, I feel sad and you know, these things. And so there's something that is called picture looping, kind of where these pictures illuminate up and we start to play these pictures out in our life again and again and again. So it could be with different people, but um, we're operating by a picture. And we have to know kind of um, what these pictures are because our internal pictures get reflected out to our external world. And that allows us to know kind of, you know, what's in us. And by placing our attention, you know, within, now we're starting to, you know, um, we have the ability then to navigate, navigate from wholeness, create from wholeness. These pictures are going to start to illuminate, um, but what is going to happen is you'll learn, and we'll talk more about it, how to, what to do with those pictures and how to transform those pictures, how to, you know, match and clear pictures, how to, um, you know, what you can do with those pictures. Think about it this way. If, when I place my attention here in my heart, what it does is the heart creates in a circle. It creates an energetic field, a bubble around me. That bubble is like my spaceship. This is my navigational system. My inner compass is in my heart. It is the space kind of in between. And when my attention is here, then my spaceship is floating. I'm calm. I'm safe. It's kind of like, I don't even care how this person really responds, like in the example, because I'm focused here. And this is wellness. This is wholeness. Now we want attention to always return here because we have an opportunity in this time to create our worlds from wholeness. What does that mean? That means that your pictures, your intentions that you have are aligned with the wave energy of your heart, your vibration, your feeling, your energy. And in this time then, if we're focused here, the, the eye of the heart can see from wholeness. It doesn't see in duality. So if somebody's narcissist trying to pick a fight, you're not going to please them because you, you, you see duality and this is not what we're interested in. We're interested in connecting, being connected to people who are in this game, who are in this reality of who are heart centered, creating from wholeness and it's about attention. So what does this mean then? This means that, you know, instead of me reacting, something happens in the external, like a snake or whatever, instead of me responding, reacting, or maybe it's a threat. Is this person gonna call me back or not call me back? I have the power to decide where does my attention go and what I place it on. And placing it in your heart is the space of the unknown. That is the unknown. The unknown may sound scary, but the unknown is where all peace is. This is where it is the zero point, where there is oscillation, where there is this opportunity to create with creator, with God, with the planet. It is the space of relationship. It is the magic. And so kind of by occupying this space, what starts to happen then is psychological and physiological and kind of behavioral responses. Like you don't even quite flinch. You are present. You are really able to see and accept, kind of embrace and transform what is happening around you. And you see one thing and you have to kind of start to Tune into this now. When you look at nature, like I'd like to show you my roses out there, it's like everything is blooming. We, we're in a Garden of Eden, but everyone's been programmed out and they can't see it because they're in their mind. But when you go into the heart, you open to the wisdom of your heart. 
and that opens this garden of abundance. Now, you may say, well, I don't see that on a TV. Yeah, because you're looking at duality. That's what duality looks like. But what does wholeness look like? Now, if we're all in agreement to this, and by being in agreement, we are in agreement to be heart connected. That communication is flowing. Like, you know, here I'm giving and I'm teaching and there is a flow back that there is this relationship and it isn't just me giving everything away and I'm asking pre-order my book and support, you know, flow back, you know, and I'm flow, you know, that flow comes back. I'm flowing back. I am like, I am there. Like people that have responded, I'm hooking your intentions up. Like there is just this flow, this wave, this greater whole. Because where we're moving into right now is we can create more together than we can apart. And we have to find the people that can show up, that, you know, respond. And by, by placing attention in the heart, it opens your heart. And that is what gives you the courage. It gives you the courage to, you know, be aligned with your feelings to start to see these pictures that illuminate and the programmings that you've been operating by, but now really choose the pictures where you place your attention. Because if I'm in my spaceship here and my, my attention goes to, oh, am I gonna get abandoned? I will fly out of my space. I will disassociate. My spaceship will start spinning. I'll be out of control. I'll be in survival and look at what the world's in right now. What you're seeing in the world is kind of those four basic strategies, survival strategies, and how we can all play them all out. We all play them all out to a certain degree, but that's not the game. I'm really bored of that game. And these tools are really to show you what that game is, because when you can see it and identify it, now I'm talking about a different game. And this game, it's that inner compass and really, what is that inner compass? It's that gyroscope. What a gyroscope is, is this. It's in every single plane. It's, it's internal navigation system. That way, if I'm flying a plane and it's foggy, cloudy, and I can't see, I just punch in the destination. And the gyroscope, it's kind of like the heart in a way, and it's where, it's where our energy connects because we have three different axes. We have our vertical axis, which means the vertical is where our heart is connected to God and to the planet. And we have our horizontal axis, which is where our heart's connected to our future, connected to the past. And we have our another horizontal axis, which is the active side, the passive, the negative, positive. And these axes create kind of in our bubble, create a navigation machine. This is kind of like the gyroscope, the internal navigation. How can I transform my life, change it? I'm placing my intention here. Attention. And then I start to change my pictures, which we'll talk about next week and how to do that. You know, and you can look at my um, kind of videos on the beginning steps of we started with awareness, attention, intention, kind of backspace. And now I'm kind of giving you a very, very brief overview of the business of being. And, you know, go to the um, businessofbeing.org and you can take a little quiz to see, um, you know, what survival strategy kind of you fall into and we all fall into several. But, um, you know, I am asking for your support for pre-ordering a book. So what we've done is a crowdfunding campaign. And what that is, is it actually connects us to international publishers. I think we have 140 maybe orders. So I am I am like sending waves of love out to you guys who have supported. And I give a lot of free courses and free things and I'm asking for kind of that support, creating in greater whole, kind of with our intentions, this is why we create together because we're all in agreement to each other's intentions. And, and by having those agreements connected, it uplifts us all. 
and we're supporting kind of this field of we are going to be with people that have a heart because I think that most painful thing for people is where and what is so confusing is you know when people are saying one thing you're looking at duality and your heart is breaking and especially if you're sensitive you've had to close down your heart you've been attacked you you know you shut down you shut off or we shut down kind of our heart because you know of our own mental pictures our own fears of i'm stupid and then we we walk around with that and we create with that when we don't even need to and so you know living in the heart kind of you know having this navigation system and really practical tools on how to do that because if i am sitting and my attention is outside of my space at all i start to tilt i start to spin what am i going to do if i'm kind of like super positive like a super positive person you know they're not facing what is in reality but i'm going to be super positive in that vibration if i'm feeling great i'm expanded no that doesn't really work you know it's kind of like okay yes that's one side of it but you know everything has to balance and so the centerpiece of where kind of these three axes meet and connected here now this opens up and this is where the magic begins. This is where you can create. It's not just you creating. You're creating with the field, kind of with God. You're creating or whatever your language is, the planet. And, you know, these aspects of ourself, the passive and, you know, active aspects. And there is a system for it. And there is a way of how to achieve that. There is a path. And so... Um, go i think you can get the link since i you know it's mercury retrograde on certain things and my facebook didn't quite work but go to kimbellissimo.com and at the top you can pre-order the business of being it is and you can look if you want more information about what's in the book i have laid out chapters my partner and i emil have laid out chapters tomorrow at friday um, there's a Facebook event that Sammy Simpson, um, I'm doing with him, um, and get on my email list. If you can get your email to me and I can let you know the things that I'm going to be doing because I'm on different platforms. My YouTube has a lot of my long videos up there. Um, and also on Sunday is the door of divinity. This is, um, something I have done with a client of mine. I, co-create with clients all the time. Emil was a client of mine. And then, you know, in working through, you know, he's a top level business person and working through that, we created this whole system. So creating with clients is amazing because we're creating new things and based kind of on these tools. Um, and so on Sunday is the door of divinity, which we are, you know, going to be kind of moving up to the higher realms. And um, I helped my client Val with her father passing. And people say, oh, I don't want to talk about death, but it's not really, you know, it's really looking at kind of, we're at an ending right now. In our lives, we are ending the old, this life of duality. Now, some people may not want to end it and you just need to know that. And you, your heart may feel, it may break. But I want you to choose and place your attention on, I'm going to create in the whole. I am going to create my life where it is whole, where you have love and you have abundance because it is there. Like where you have miracles and things are happening. Like, and you see the world kind of how it is and not these opinions of what people are saying of how it is. And then you are connected by connecting to source where do I get my information? Well, I couldn't read, you know, until I was in the 10th grade and I don't really <laughs> read. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I connect to God. I listen. I'm asking questions. I'm in relationship and I'm in relationship with my clients. And so there is nothing better than really being heart connected and then learning how to use pictures because we got to, we're the hearts in relationship with the mind. 
See, the mind will abandon the heart, and that's what we've lived centuries, abandoning our heart, abandoning how we feel. And now we're going to integrate it. So join me and please support me and um, Emil in the book, The Business of Being, and pre-order. We have, I think, in two days, 140 pre-orders. And we are just going for 500. And then we get a great publisher and we'll have it out to you. And we're, we did a TV show and it's showing in five countries in Europe. So we have a, you know, international base and, you know, would love to support you with all of this information so that you can live your life in a new way. And um, so, so many blessings. And today is the tipping point day where even if you feel like shit, I want you just dropping in your heart and just feeling that wave energy of love and love is, and that may not mean much to you, but just this care and love for yourself of where you're going to really support and honor and be courageous and that you're going to, you will have a life created from the whole. And um, thank you so much for joining. Thanks.